Hey, uh, In The Points listeners, uh, thanks for subscribing and checking out this channel. Um, I'm playing fetch with my dog right now with a loud bone. That's the sound you hear, her breathing into the microphone like she does on some of our podcasts. Uh, like this podcast you're going to hear today, which is called Connecting the Classics. Um, I host it with, this is Will Hagel of Live from Red Lion, which, by the way, Live from Red Lion will be back sometime soon. It's just since we moved away from 2471 Silver Lake Boulevard, Apartment C, it's been harder and harder to get episodes together. But, you know, still tons of great content out there. Still season five, still season six, no seasons. So look out for that. But maybe once a month, I'm probably on In the Post Points feed, which In the Points now, by the way, is a podcast network. Uh, so about once a month on In the Points feed, you're going to get a episode of Connecting the Classics. Uh, another week, you're going to get an episode of Willipedia. You might get an episode of In the Vines. You might get an episode of The Smews with Lando Lakes. There's a lot of good content coming. If you like Connecting the Classics, you can go subscribe to their feed, Connecting the Classics. And uh, it's you're going to hear some music and some talking about music. And you're going to hear me. Apparently, I love the sound of my own all voice. Right. Cause yeah. All I, I do is clap. make podcasts that Three, no one listens to. Two, but hey, you're listening, one. so thanks for listening. And uh, into the all right, enjoy the show. The classics. Episode 29. Episode 29. And hey, the, re- what we're turning. the results are in from episode 28. Um, 50% of voters voted for a tie between me, the LA face, and me, the Oakland booty. And uh, 50% voted for Lee, so I guess by a small margin, Lee wins episode 28. But you know more than I know. Big thank you to all our listeners who voted. Yeah, you know, it feels good to be on top. We, uh, one listener who voted for Lee said uh, for the album choice alone, his album was Mort Garson's Plantasia. And then another yeah, listener so- uh, wrote in and said, Lee loses all previously accumulated wokeness points. So, <laughs> uh, what, for The Lion King? I don't remember. Everyone, go back and listen to episode 28 if you want to know what, what that means. But this is episode 29 of connecting the classics and this is the show where we connect the classics using tangential references just like a 90s movie star kevin bacon <laughs> kevin bacon um yeah so we've now had as many episodes as uh, we've been on the earth as years as we've been on the earth that's right well are you not are you not 28 i'm 27 Oh my god, oh man, making me feel old here Yeah, but I'll be 28 soon, but that's <laughs> irrelevant Because this is episode 29 And we're talking about Wu-Tang Wu-Tang and Spice Girls Wu-Tang and Spice Girls are the two albums of the 90s That we deemed most undisputedly classic Which I gotta say, I do like the contrast That's why I wanted to keep the two I, I, I'm gonna say out front that I don't really like the spice girls album spice Uh uh-huh but um i think the contrast is great yeah um so we'll get into that later in the episode but and uh uh, i will say for the record too that we came up with a theme of the 90s and then my first thought was spice girls where i was true yeah they're very 90s i was trying to think of some sort of like boy band whatever girl band and i'm not gonna lie a little bit of it was i was thinking like we should go outside of our comfort zone because we tend to pick just the same albums totally. or same like styles of albums. But then I ended up picking boot. So pretty much I picked both albums today. So, <laughs> uh, I'm going to give myself but I love, 10 I love points the off the bat pick. for that. Yeah. yeah. I love the Wu-Tang pick. Um, especially 36 chambers, such like a monumental undisputed classic. Oh Yeah. And it was really fun to go back. I don't think I'd ever really sat down with the album and listened to it all the way through, which um, if, we're, if we get into takes on that, I feel like uh, 
Rizza, who is sort of the I was gonna say, let's master, give mastermind. Let's, let's give points yeah. to Rizza for like putting it all together that way. Yeah. So he basically, well, this is at least what I've read before. He basically, you know, gathered all the rappers, got the equipment, and said, um, you know, I'm gonna make us famous. All we gotta do is like put out these albums every like year or so, or whatever. And um, he pulled it all together. But I even feel like inside of this album, listening to it in one shot. It huh. felt like he it was almost like he was conscious of the number of hits that they already had on the album, and like he didn't, he just wanted to get the album done, if that makes sense. So like he used the formula that had been working and just like cranked out the rest of the album, and then uh, they moved on to the next thing because I think he saw the bigger picture that it was more than just putting out albums, it's doing shows, it's creating like a movement. Yeah, exactly, and that's what they had like woo wear and stuff and like yeah if you read his books which i can't remember they're called the tao of the woo is one and then yeah. there's another one but he goes into just how it was all like a big business plan from the start and like yeah he, he had the idea that no one else had really done to go to a record label and say like you're gonna put out wu-tang's album but then every individual member gets to put out their own albums on whatever yeah. label they want so it was kind of mm-hmm. like a for the first time of like someone really doing like uh, what is it like? A high tide raises all rises all ships or whatever. Is that a saying? Yeah, uh, yeah. High tide raises all boats. Yeah, something like that. So, um, a rising tide, rising. Yeah, tide. but yeah, it's uh, great. And just totally. how I feel like now it's like Wu Tang's been talked about so much, and like everyone knows all about them. I, I feel, but just how they had their like characters that they embodied, and like basing themselves totally. off kung fu, and like how they were all obsessed with chess and stuff and yeah should we just go into it yeah maybe if you want to do your pick um, yeah yeah yeah, i definitely think they were you know unique for that branding aspect Um, so without especially for like 93 right this 36 chambers is 93 Uh uh-huh that's pretty early into like what we consider is like a very modern feel yeah so without further ado, we're going into from 36 Chambers, Wu Tang Clan's The Mystery of Chess Boxing. Ooh. A game of chess is like a sword fight. You must think first before you move. Connecting the cl- Classics is a podcast like a sword fight. Me versus Lee. It's almost invincible. <laughs> Roll, I'ma give it to ya, with no trivia Roll like cocaine straight from like Bolivia My hip hop yeah. will rock and shock the nation Like the emancipation proclamation We can see a post with slaves like dead I like it cause there's not much, the beat the bang your head. is kind of like the We Will Rock You, you know like I'm the cowards to the caucus mountain. But it's like so uh, spare, sparse Yeah, and that's what I feel like is I feel like RZA had the ability to make every song as good as like Bring the ruckus or yeah. cream or whatever, but he like held back and just like let's knock out this album. We got our hits. And I think like with a song like this, I was reading he would like cut up. He just recorded everyone's verse and then he like would cut them out and just rearrange it. Wow. Like Timberland, where? Yeah, me and the clan and yo the land cruisers out there. Peace to all the crooks, all the niggas with bad looks. Ball head braids, blows his hook. We got chrome text, nigga play the max, black axe. Drug dealing styles with fat stacks. Only been a good nigga for a minute though, cause I got to get my props and win it. Yo, I got beef with commercial ass niggas with gold teeth. Camping in a Lexus seat and beef. Straight up and down, don't even bother. I got 40 niggas up in here now who kill niggas for me. My people's are you with me where you at? In the front, in the back, kill the bees on the tap. My people's are you with me where you at? Smoking meth, hitting caps on the block with the gap. Here I go, deep tight flow. Jack you stole, can never get this No, I'm Terry Bomb and shit Boom, that's warming up a little bit Rhythm, rapping in is what's happening Keep the pockets stopping in, hands clapping in At the party when I move my body Gotta get up and be somebody Grab the back of home, put strength to the bone Dan, 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 into the Wu-Tang zone Sure enough, when I rock that stuff Huff, puff, I'm gonna catch up Rough, tough, rough, kicking rhymes Like Jim Kelly or Alex Kelly I'm a m- Beetle belly rhymes, coming raw style Hardcore, niggas 
me coming to the hip hop store. Coming to buy grocery from me. Turn out to be a hip hop MC. The law, in order to enter the Wu Tang, you must bring the whole dirty bastard type slang. Represent the Jizza, Abbott, Ruza, Shot Quan. Inspect the deck, dirty hole getting low with his flow. Introduced in the ghost face killer. No one can get it lie. My people saw you with me where you at? In the front, in the back, killer bees on attack. My people saw you with me where you at? Smoking map, hitting cats on the block with the gas. Speaking of the devil's sight, no it's the guard, get your shit right. Make a trifle, yo, I killed you in a past life. On the mic while you was kicking that fast shit. You and Nick tried to get it, got blasted. Half mastered ass style, mad rough chest. When I struck, I had on Tim's in the black mask. Remember that shit? I know you don't remember Jack. That night, yo, I was sitting like a spike bat. And then you thought I was bugged out and crazy. Strapped for nonsense after me became lazy, yo. Nobody budged while I shot slugs. Never shot. Dubs, I'm running with dubs that flood bucks. So grab your eight plus one, start flipping and tripping. Niggas is jetting, I'm licking off, son. Woo, dang, woo, dang, woo, dang, woo. Homicide's illegal and death is a penalty One justifies the homicide when he dies in his own iniquity It's the master of the mantis rapture coming at ya We have an APB on an MC killer Looks like the work of a master Evidence indicates that it's stature Merciless like a terrorist, hard to capture the flow Changes like a chameleon Plays like a friend and stabs you like a dagger This technique attacks the immune system Disguised like a lie, paralyzing the victim You scream as it enters your bloodstream but yeah, their whole backstory, I feel like we could talk about Wu-Tang forever, but like, I don't know, just, I remember I read their books when I was a kid, and that's what really got me into them, oddly enough, is like Riz's books. So did I, did I tell you when I went to China, I went to the Shaolin Temple? Oh, really? And it's like part of why I was excited about it was because through like Wu-Tang. Oh, nice. Hearing about like Shaolin and yeah. being into kung fu movies, I feel like was part of like... Comic, comic books and kung fu was like a yeah. very weird like rap culture thing because of Wu-Tang. Alright. Pass it back. Nice. Getting it kicked off here. Yeah. Getting, it, um, getting it started with that boom, boom, ch, boom, boom, yeah. ch. <laughs> um, So... Other album, we were looking at Spice. So I did do some, like, I was doing some research on the Spice Girls because I didn't really know much of their history, for, like, as an adult. Uh-huh. I, I remember being, like, a kid and this music was super popular. I feel like my, my brother had this, like, tape in his car. Um, mm-hmm. when I, He used to give me rides to, like, kindergarten. He would blast it because he was, like, in high school and I was in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. But, like, I didn't really know much of how history like looked at them. So it was super interesting to find out, and maybe this isn't a surprise to you, but they were basically formed by like a producer manager who like held open auditions for them. And they were like placed in a house together hmm. for like four, four, six, four to six months. And then they sort of auditioned for labels to see who would sign them, or at least who would help them make a couple like songs or demos. So, they were very was much it like, like a, a reality sus- show type thing or no? It wasn't. There was no reality element, but it was very much that like yeah. world of things. So these people weren't necessarily the most talented musicians, singers, dancers. They were very much trying to be pop stars. Uh huh. And so I want to say know that. real quick on the connection between the two albums in general is mm-hmm. I feel like Spice Girls and like boy bands too kind of yeah. came out of like what Wu Tang did or like were partially. They might not have been uh-huh. directly influenced bit by it, but they probably were at least a little bit because it works. There's definitely know? a parallel. Yeah. And like, especially when you think of Spice Girls having each of their own personas. Just That's what like, I mean. Like Baby Spice, Sporty Spice. Yep. And yeah, by so the way. Can you, name, uh, all, can you name all of them? Let me Real see. Real quick, I'm going to Baby I'm quiz you. Sp- Baby Spice, Sporty yep. Spice. Yep. David Beckham's wife is Posh. <laughs> What's Posh? Yeah. Right. Okay. And, yep. Got uh, two more. Two more. Baby Sporty. You already said Did sporty. I already say sporty? But there's scary, one with scary. Yep. Okay, one more. Oh, uh, shit. Um, baby scary. What does she look like? She's got red hair. That's the giveaway. Is it ginger? Yep. Ginger spice. Ginger spice. Nice. 
Nice. All right. 20 points to Will for that. Thank you. Um, let's launch into the song and uh, we keep talking about them. So I went with Say You'll Be There. I figured one of us is going to do Wannabe. So I went with Say You'll Be There. All right. Um, give you the ability to switch to Wannabe if that's not what you did, that's not what you chose. <laughs> All right. Good call because I was going to choose to become one. Nice. Honestly, I'm a low key, not even low key Spice Girls <laughs> fan. <laughs> So, first fun fact, do you know this song was on the first Now CD that was put out in the U.S.? Oh, I do know that, and it might be getting in my connections. Ooh. Wow, we're going to cross the streams. We're crossing the streams. We even grabbed already. Also, I feel like this music video reminds me of uh, ooh, Kung Fu Candy. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. And they're doing Kung Fu moves in the video. Also, this... Uh, Uh, I also had kind of a crush on uh, Baby Spice. And Baby, Spice. definitely, when I was like eight. Um, but this song is a hit too, you know? People forget about this one, but it's a hit. Yeah. Also, speaking of wokeness points, what do you think about the only um, black member being called Scary Spice? <laughs> so, when I was watching the documentary, it sounded like her and Ginger Spice were the ones that were the most like. Uh, they had the biggest personalities. Oh yeah, just the the biggest personalities. They wanted it the most, and that the other three were a little more passive. Uh, but yeah, I don't know why they call her Scary Spice. It's a little weird. No, I feel like she rocks it though with like the like her attitude and stuff. Yeah, she has a crazy like uh, Liverpool accent or something like that. Mm. It's not at all what you would expect from her. It almost sounds Irish. Also, this song, the background, I feel like it's like almost like G Funk, like. Yeah. Know? She's from Leeds. So if I don't know, I didn't know there was a Leeds accent, but she has a crazy accent. Well, I can't wait to see where this episode leads. And <laughs> if you want to hear your quote on the radio, you can email connectingtheclassics at gmail dot com with your comments or respond to the survey monkey in the notes of the show. I read that um, sometimes they would turn off Victoria Beckham's mic. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because she it just sucks. Like she was the least committed. Yeah. I feel like she was like the most forgettable one. Like I only know about her yeah. because she became David Beckham's wife. But at the time, I was... I probably wasn't as concerned with Posh Spice. She was way more into fashion, I guess. What's well, her she's, thing? She's Posh. Yeah. But going back to now, so did you know, I didn't realize it was in the UK first. I mean, Spice Girls are from the UK. No, like the Now CDs. Oh, really? Series. Oh, I didn't know that either. There was already like 15 Now, that's what I call music, for the UK. Wow. And then they started it over and did American music, or American charts. Yeah. But I feel like this goes with the thing, like, the 90s is so much, like, it's such a long decade. I feel like anyone who thinks about it, you either think of, like, I don't know, Spice Girls, boy bands, like, I feel like it's almost easy. I feel like we've tried to block out the fact that boy bands were so popular for so long. Yeah. Ah, maybe not. Delete that when I'm editing it. I think we're at like now 70 right now in the U.S. Yeah. I think I saw that the other day. All right. Passing it back. Oh, you passing it back? Like passing a boom, back. boom, ch, boom, boom, ch. Remember that <laughs> beat we were listening to? Yeah. Well... I'm going to Bohemian music- Rhapsody. I'm going to Musical Connection, and not Bohemian Rhapsody, but it uh, does start with a B. This is from the soundtrack of End of Days in 1999. Okay. Although I had it, I didn't know that until today because I had it on a burnt copy of a CD that I had written the words uh, "Infinite" on. Okay. Because this is uh, Eminem, Bad Influence. Wow. People say that I'm a bad influence. 
99 m and You like that boom boom. Nice. Yeah, but I always thought, I always think of Eminem as being from the 90s, but I didn't realize he's like mostly in the 2000s. Yeah, I think it's because really my off. age is like, I was born in 91. <laughs> I'm more than ill, scarier than a white journalist, than a room with Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. Human horror film, but with a lot of funnier plot. And people to film me, cause I'ma still be the mad rapper, whether I got money or not. As long as I'm on pills and I got plenty of pot, I'll be in a canoe paddling, making fun of your yacht. But I would like an award for the best. Uh, Wu Tang and Protect Your Neck says. Rhymes rugged and built like Schwarzenegger. Yeah. And end of days starred uh, Schwarzenegger. Nice. No shit, I'm a great danger to my health. Why else would I kill you and jump in a grave and bury myself? People say that I'm a bad influence. I say the world's already fucked. I'm just adding to it. They say I'm suicidal. Teenagers suicidal. Come on, suicidal. Go ahead, get mad and do it. Just let it go. People say that I'm a bad influence. I say the world's already fucked. I'm just adding to it. They say I'm suicidal. Teenagers suicidal. Also, just the end of the 90s was kind of the end of days if you looking back on it yeah you know i feel like the end of the clinton administration was really when america started going backwards yeah i think when we squandered our uh, first ever uh like positive budget yeah well then it's like 9 11 and then Paranoia. Like the recession and then Trump. It's just like, I feel like, and whereas the 90s, America was like the only superpower of the world. Honestly, I feel like there's this thing where people call, I read an article in The Atlantic about it, where people call um, the 20th century the American century. Yeah. Did we talk about this on the podcast already? I yeah, mean, we you talked about it on the China episode. Yeah, but yeah. Now that I, now that we're, I was doing research for this '90s episode of Connecting the Classics, I was thinking like, really the only time that America was really crushing it was the '90s, because there was no Soviet Union. They were like the definite superpower, and then just pumping yeah. out the Spice Girl. Well, Spice Girls are England, but. I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm overthinking all this century. connection, but then it's like Eminem. Michael like, Jordan. And then Eminem starts coming out, and he's like the angry guy, and it's like he too is like the first like white person. I feel like Wu-Tang really appealed to white people, and as did a lot of rap in the 90s, but especially yeah. Wu-Tang because of their whole like shtick, you know? Definitely. So, and then I feel like Eminem is another representation of that, you know? And yeah. Like coming out at the end of the 90s. Yeah, I feel like that was a huge market for 90s rap was the sort of suburban white. Yeah. All right, passing it back. I thought that was going to be a better connection. I'm going to give myself minus 45 points. <laughs> oh, yeah, and on this oh. podcast, there's a winner and loser. Um, we award each other points. Points don't matter. All right. And we're now on the podcast network. But make in the sure points, you vote. In the points don't matter. Uh, make sure you vote, though. We It does matter, the winner. Yeah, vote in the our survey, survey monkey. monkey. Um, no, I'll give you like five points. I didn't. I don't think I've ever heard that Eminem song. Okay. Or it's, it's been a while. Um, I thought so it was we high, en- about- high energy to start off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm all sorry. Right. I'm sorry. All right. So we're talking about the Now CD. Um, the first U.S. now, uh, that's what I call music. Can you name another song that was on? I guess you, you might because I think you did some research. I can. All right, um, name but one. I, I, I want to s- know it. I want to save it, though. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> All right, but can you just name another one other than your connection? Um, going to say... I'll give you a hint. It starts with an L and ends with an N-E, Kravitz. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is it? Uh, Lenny Kravitz, Fly Away. That's a good one for that. Did you ever have a Lenny Kravitz face? No. Absolutely not. Did you? Uh, 
This song was okay. I can imagine you for some reason being very into it, like that. It's... I wish that I could fly. Shout out Travis Metzger. Is this like a... <laughs> is a uh... This is great. Yeah, this is that same guy that does the Bustin' video. Try to show you this. Yeah, this freshman year, he was obsessed with this. That's pretty funny. It's so good. <laughs> Travis Metzger, one of the people who voted in our survey monkey. Um, this is me uh, biasing the judges. I know. This is. I'm gonna give you minus five points for that, but plus ten for the song. So five points net total. I was hoping I could just slip it in and see if you'd notice. <laughs> Funny thing is, I'm gonna actually give you minus 20 points because something like this could never exist in the 90s. Yeah, that's true. This is like what, 2000s? Totally. Yeah, like YouTube didn't even exist until like 2007. It's like a, a Windows media editor though, so it's early 2006, 2007. Lisa Bonet from uh, the Cosby Show. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that was great. Just like a dragonfly. <laughs> wow. I'm going to give you 20 points for that. All right, you passing it back? I'm passing it. Well, on that note, we're going back to... Uh, Eminem, who said uh, he's scarier, like scary spice, than a white. Did he say that? No, he said I'm scarier, oh, oh, oh. scarier than a white journalist in a room with Lauren Hill. Oh, okay. Human horror film, but with a lot funnier plot. So on that note, we're going into Lauren Hill. Nice. Do what you're that thing. You're psyching me out. You yeah. psyched me out when you said you weren't playing Lauryn Hill. Yeah, I sent Leah a link to a Lauryn Hill song earlier and was like, I'm not playing this song. Which, to my credit, I didn't. That was X Factor. That was a that whole other convoluted path, but I ended up taking this path. Good, I'm glad we got the now. Great video. It's split in half. On the left side is like the 1960s. And on the right is like present day which was the 90s of lauren hill rapping and on the left she's like a doo-wop singer and i think on the album version she's like remember when people used to like sing like this and there's like a little extended intro and it's kind of like a throwback Mm -hmm. With the horns. Now that was the sin that did Jezebel in. Who you gonna tell when the repercussion is spent? Showing off your ass because you thinking it's a train girl. For the miseducation of Lauren Hill, Columbia Records considered bringing in an outside producer. And they had early talks with the RZA of Wu Tang. Really? But Hill was adamant about writing, arranging, and producing the album herself. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. She said, who can tell my story better than me? She was pretty young, too, when she did this, right? Um, I'm not sure. I know it was, too, as like, a break from, like, the Fu Fugees. Yeah, I think and she was, like, like, 23. Huh. 
which is pretty nuts. Yeah, and then she like disappeared for 15 years or something, which kind of added to the whole like mystique of it, you know? Yeah. I think she's one of those people that's kind of too smart for her own good. Yeah. She's like, or like girl sweatshirt. Crazy. Like, yeah. Erica Badu. Yeah. yeah. The second verse is dedicated to the man. More concerned with his rims and his Timbs and his women. I even put her on a level of her own, man. man. She's like, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. Who that you fan, Papa Yang? You got Yang. Let's stop pretend. The one to pack pissed out by the waist, man. Crissed out by the case, man. Still the name of the space, man. The pretty face, man. Claiming that they did a bit, man. Need to take care of their three and four kids. Been the face in court case when the child supports late. Money taking home, breaking out. You wonder why women hate me. The sleepy silent man. The punk domestic violence, man. The quick to shoot the semen. Stop acting like boys and be men. How you going win? You ain't right within. How you gon' win when you ain't right within? How you gon' win when you ain't right within? Uh-uh, come again. Uh, yeah. 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 Yo, yo, come again. Come again. He says that when she started recording originally in like New York and New Jersey, she said that people were up in her face and she said it was giving her bad energy. <laughs> so she decided to go somewhere where there was good vibes. And so she went to Tough Gong uh, in Kingston, Jamaica. Oh, yeah. Tough Gong Studios. Yeah, she recorded the whole album there. So crazy. I didn't know that. And like I read something about um, when she was playing Lost Ones. It was like there were like all these like Jamaican kids who were like going nuts to the song because they liked it That's so awesome. much. Yeah. This is also supposedly I don't really get it, but someone said like on Wikipedia it was like the song's about gender equality or something, and uh, I feel like so it's connecting the classics. You know, we have Wu Tang and Spice Girls. Nice. And passing it back. Also, like the horns, right. the horns in that song are good. You know, give me five points for horns. Yeah, maybe even a Jam- like Jamaica reggae connection. Yeah. Um. Well, in the nineties, so, it was the third wave of ska was going on in America. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be getting into that today. I think I'm going to start um, talking quieter on with more of a smooth radio voice. Hey, if you like so, it, give me three points. <laughs> Venmo is a dollar. Um. Oh yeah, and uh, we will uh, Venmo you a dollar if if you email connecting the classics at gmail dot com and give us an album recommendation that we take. All right, thanks, on to Lee. So we left off with Lenny Kravitz "Fly Away," um, which was on the album Five, which I was thinking maybe a little Lou Lou Bega Five Percenters Wu Tang <laughs> Mambo Number no. Five. He's from Germany. Did you know that? No, but. The first time Isn't I heard that, that song was in Switzerland. But instead, I decided to force a connection for a song that I think is just the quality is better. Uh, we started the podcast at what time? Five. Five. Thirty. P.M. And what time uh, does the dawn start? Five a.m. <laughs> so let's la- let's launch into this song by a group called P.M. Dawn. Okay. Set adrift on memory bliss. 1991. Set adrift on memory bliss of you. Trying to get all flavors of the 90s. Yeah, I like that. That's what I'm saying, though. There's so many flavors of the 90s, you know? Oh, yeah. Remix of Spondu, Spondu Ballet. You recognize that sample? It's ba, 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 ba. Yeah, exactly. I know this must be true. The camera pans a cocktail glass behind a blind of plastic plants. I find a lady with a fat diamond ring. But then you know I can't remember a damn thing. I think it's one of those deja vu things. So PM stands for, the rapper's name is Prince B. And then the DJ's name is Minute Mix. DJ Minute Mix. But 
but these guys were kind of controversial because they were sort of softer than you know I think this came out in 91 so you still had that sort of old school they were killing them softly like Lauren Hill like Lauren Hill but there was a controversial event when Prince B had said in an interview KRS One wants to be a teacher but a teacher of what and so at one of his shows in New York uh, KRS One showed up with his like crew and they rushed the stage and he like physically tossed the, the rapper off the stage and then they grabbed the DJ and like made him leave wow and uh when Karis one was asked about it, he said, I was, uh, I'm a teacher of respect. Huh. Like this is like if we're comparing it to Eminem and angrier stuff of the later nineties, it's like this is the the good old days. It's like you the know? rave. It's the spillover from like rave culture yeah. where everyone's like about peace and love and like Yeah. Kinda has even that electronic like drum loop that that Harris one was with one of his other people from Boogie Down Productions and they ended up after they forced them off stage uh, performed a song performed one of their own songs <laughs> that's funny <laughs> which is pretty funny um so you passing it back over here yeah pass it so speaking of the early 90s speaking of well I was gonna say I think it's kind of funny that we like always think about time in terms of decades when it's really like the difference between 89 and 90 is like uh -huh. if you were around in 90 it's like oh that was just last year you know mm -hmm. i don't know if that makes any sense but it's like you know it culture we like kind of look back on it and define it as like oh this was the 90s but when you're in totally. the moment you're kind of just like thinking like you're not really thinking like that anyways that was a diver but going back to the 90s being the best century or the best decade of all time to completely do what I just said I was didn't like. Anyways, this is Bill Clinton on Arsenio Hall playing saxophone. Nice. Nice. <laughs> This is during his run, or is he president at this point? So the connection here is just the horns. Governor Bill Clinton. Yeah, he was governor at the time. I don't know if you've seen this before, but let me see this. It's been a minute. Yeah, so it was during his campaign, and a lot of people like talked about this as a pivotal moment because he like was cool guy, Bill Clinton on Arsenio Hall, you know? Yeah. Ripping the sacks.
Heartbreak Hotel by Elvis. Yeah. And then later, uh, Arsenio Hall interviews him about Elvis, and he's like, he's like, I like the young Elvis. He was full of energy, and then by the time he was old, he was all fat and terrible. Haha. <laughs> That was my Bill Clinton impression. So what were you going to say about the 90s? I was just going to say, I think another thing that happened in the 90s, or like we're still feeling the effects of, was this like weird partisan uh, standards, like back and forth thing, where we, like, uh, you know, Democrats, I guess, I've heard a lot of compl- uh, cr- like criticism that the Democrats defended Bill Clinton, and so like why can they get so upset about Donald Trump's, you know, sexual mm-hmm. um, misconduct, or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, and it's like, I think 90s is, is a, a reference that keeps getting brought up, 90s until now, where it's like this back and forth of one side doing something so that they can't complain when the other side does it. And it's just this, like, increasingly, like, game of chicken, or you know what I'm saying, where neither side is really taking the higher ground. Yeah, yeah just keeps going um the like partisan yeah back and forth uh so i'm gonna go on a quick run here so like bill clinton was running for president i'm going on a run by the way bill clinton tony morrison described him as the first black president which i feel like that was something i always heard (laughs) like growing up what so bad though i don't know but it's tony morrison and like i feel like she i feel like that's a term that people have taken out of context and stuff but her whole point was like people should vote for her. i don't know i might not know her actual point but from what i was reading it was like that people should vote for clinton because he's like came from a like lower income family and you know like somehow made it out of arkansas you know and oh, that okay he's that like was her fighting was her for argument. yeah but it is too like I feel like he definitely appealed to like African American voters and like by going on Arsenio Hall and in his interview he was like I was the only governor in South Central Los Angeles before the riots like no one would go there mm-hmm. and stuff so like definitely doing the politician thing of just trying to appeal to black people which then I feel like people picked up on that to in mm-hmm. the Hillary election because they're like talking about all the um messed up policies which i don't really know enough about it that you know like prisons whatever mm-hmm. blah 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 that the clintons did um but anyway speaking of horns we're going more horns horn to horn to horn bill clinton was a horny guy and yes. more amazing one and uh <laughs> i right, give, give you 10 points for that and that was an on the spot one uh and Another person who disappeared after the 90s, like Lauren Hill. Got any guesses? Another guy that disapp- disappeared in the 90s? Yeah. Glenn Gould. Who's Glenn Gould again? <laughs> Just kidding. He's like a, a Canadian like prodigy piano player. Oh, maybe we'll hear him on a future episode. But right now <laughs> we're going into... What did uh, Bill Clinton play? Heartbreak Hotel. We're going into Neutral Milk Hotel, Holland, 1945. Nice. Two, one, two, three, four. Kind of become cliche, like Wu-Tang Clan, but I had to get it in. Because kind of talked about like the decades and stuff. Nice. I wanted more rock. This is like the sound of like indie rock defined this album like defined indie rock of the 2000s but it couldn't have existed without this in 98 totally also like lauren hill throwback to the 60s this is throwback to holland 1945 also appealing to our other voter in the survey monkey uh <laughs> drew drew Nolsch in holland holland all right It is crazy though to think this came out in the '90s when like all the alt rock was dominating the airwaves. Yeah, so I have its time, and also kind of like the RZA, um, there was like a mastermind producer who put fuzz on every instrument for this song, which is why it sounds like. This. But 
So yeah, for people who don't know, Jeff Mangum was Neutral Milk Hotel, and he made this album, In the Aeroplane Over the Sea, that was all seminal indie album or whatever. And then he disappeared for like Lauryn Hill, like 15 years or something crazy. And then people got all nostalgic for him later on because it was such an influential album. And then he made a comeback and then all the hipsters jizzed their pants and went paid way too much money to go see him. And then Urban Outfitters started selling his albums. And But, you know, who cares? I think this album's still great, as much of a cliche as it is. Yeah. And this whole album is like a concept album about Anne Frank. Hence the name Holland 1945. And here's the horns. Buzzed out horns. I love it. Awesome. That was that's a great little run you had there. Thank you. Um, I liked that pun that you had with Bill Clinton. Um, I I'd say that's a big pun. Oh, oh! Another fellow Bronx rapper from KRS One is big pun. Nice. Couldn't do a '90s episode without doing "Still Not a Player." I Love just crush it. a lot. So when I'm on CTC, I just crush a lot. Oh. Um, go ahead and launch in. Featuring Joe, another big uh, 90s R&B singer. So this is the edited version, right? Uh, Probably, if it's the music video. Well, yeah, because isn't the actual version, so I'm not a player, I just fuck a lot. Oh, yeah, you're right. I think it is. And then, but I always knew this, too. Cause I was do you want to do that one? Do you no, no. Do that one I like this one. Because when I was in the 90s, I was a kid, and I knew it was this with edited versions yeah. and stuff. And with, like, the girl moans. Yeah, that's the bleeps. I love that. <laughs> they don't do that enough anymore. You need, like, six rulers. With the two looks. My brother was a big, big pun fan, and uh, so shout out to my brother. This was Joe, though. That's hilarious. It's just Joe. Yeah, yeah. So he's the guy who has, like... Have you heard any of his stuff from the 90s? I don't think so. Like, uh... What's the one song he has? I Want to Be Your Man or something like that. I Want to Know. That was it. Mm. But he had a song called uh, I'm Not a Player. Oh, okay. And so he just took the chorus and then rapped on it. Little brown hairs everywhere. I don't want to be a player. That was a Joe song. I don't care. That was the line I was loving as a kid. Little brown hair. Little, yeah. Little brown hairs everywhere. You nasty pun. I don't care. <laughs> I feel like uh, MC Sticky takes a lot from pun, maybe. Maybe. Subconsciously. Subconsciously. Yeah. Same like, uh, yeah. You nasty, Sticky. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> 
Yeah, this is great. I'll give you a thousand points. Nice. I feel like he's one of those dudes that was just like super charismatic, almost like Biggie. Yeah. How did and he so, die? Like, his he personality just... just came off in the mic. Uh, I think he had health problems. Yeah, he's fat. Yeah, obesity. Not trying to be. Uh, I forgot about this part. I tell you, know he's Puerto Rican. Yeah, <laughs> gotta end the song like this. He had a heart attack. Yeah, that's what it says. At the age of 28. Wow. wow. This is episode 29. 28 Club. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have a heart attack. This beat, too, is kind of like a boom, boom, very 90s. Boom, boom, ch. boom, boom, ch. boom, boom, ch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not really, though. But yeah. Just trying to connect. Just trying to weave webs over here. What is the Boricua thing from? That's another song, right? Yeah. I don't know, though. I think it's another 90s, like... Yeah, something. Boricua, Borera. Oh, internet says Daddy Yankee? Oh, right? yeah. Another that Puerto Rico. Right. Um, You passing it back? Yeah, I'll pass it. All right. Uh, So... Now we're going to get to, well, before we get to this, I'm going to say right now that I'm I'm going to close the podcast when I edit it with Semisonic's closing time. Speaking of champagne, nice. uh, I'm not going to mention that the drummer's from Champagne, but he is. Um, oh, wow. Anyways, minus 40 points for me for saying, bringing that up. And we don't have to end it with that, but I thought it, I want to play that song, but I want to talk about it anyways. Yeah, we should, we should end with it. Yeah. So, um, you know... Holland, 1945, World War II, and Frank, what was she in? She was in Danger, and that whole okay. album was all about Danger. Uh, another classic band from the 90s. Um, oh, and what did Bill Clinton do? He raised the flag, the American flag. Uh, Wu-Tang Killa Bees, K-I-L-L-A. This is Flagpole Sitta by Harvey Danger. Harvey Danger, Flagpole Sitta. <laughs> Up with Harvey Danger. Essential 90s song. Do you like this song? Actually, yeah, I recognize it now. Yeah. Um, they came up in Seattle in the 90s. Um, and I think what I was reading about this song is that it's kind of about how the Seattle scene was getting like commodified. Yeah, around them, but then they profit off it too. And I was reading the some article about like the reason, like this song. Apparently, Edward Snowden and his girlfriend were filmed on like by TMZ in Moscow. They were uh-huh. and like they were just like eating dinner in their apartment or making dinner. But this song yeah. was playing on the radio, so then like the internet was like mocking it, you know. But it's oh, like wow. this song. What it, this article is on like Vice or something, but maybe not Vice, but it was on some shitty publication. Not shitty publication, but it was on some publication. Anyways, it was talking about how they like this song has stuck around because like someone was saying it's because like the bass is distorted and plays like the lead guitar line. So I was wondering if you had any thoughts about that. The bass is like playing the lead guitar boom, line. Boom boom. Like the bass drives the song. Yeah, I like that. It's like the bass is like really prevalent in the mix, whereas like the guitars are just kind of noisy in the background. I wanna publish scenes and rage against machines. I wanna pierce my tongue, it doesn't hurt, it feels
So this song's kind of just like a critique of society. Yeah. Which I feel like he was kind of ahead of his time, too. So in your mind, what is a flagpole sitter? Sitter. Uh, I don't really. I can't remember. I think I've looked this up in the past. But to me, I just get an image of like someone who's been like, who's sitting on a flagpole. <laughs> yeah. Like you know how in like cartoons they would like hang people's shorts on flagpoles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So here's an interview with the singer who said the j there was definitely a joke to the name. It was sort of about people wrestling with the idea of wanting to be authentic while not being authentic and expressing themselves in a way that made authenticity sound idiotic. Um, he said, like, in the 20s, people would balance on top of a flagpole. There's something Groucho Marx says in the Marx Brothers film Animal Crackers where he makes a reference to being a flagpole sitter. And then having the Sitta, S-I-T-T-A, was just because the song only existed for us in our room. We thought it was funny mm -hmm. to spell things that way because our two favorite records were always Slanted and Enchanted, which had Fame Throwa on it. And Straight Outta Compton was one of the other really important records to all of us. <laughs> there you go. There's your connection to uh, rap and white people. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I actually had written that down before. It kind of all comes together. Oh! Oh! All right, passing it back. Um, okay, so we were listening to Still Not a Player, uh, which the original song was Don't Want to Be a Player by Joe. Ooh, wanna be. Don't wanna be. Um, which was produced by the, this guy, Dark Child. You ever, you know him? Um, I think his real name is Rod, Rodney Jenkins. Oh, I know Rodney. I didn't know he called himself or, uh, Dark Child. Rodney, Jer Rodney Jerkins. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, name. I don't know either of those names. <laughs> Um, he's done a bunch of stuff. He did like "Say My Name." He did a couple Spice Girl songs, mm. and he also worked with Ariana Grande. Oh, um, which her latest album? I don't know if you've listened to. Has I love Ariana Grande. The sample uh, "After Laughter" comes tears. Mm. So I don't know if you have a uh, feeling if you'd rather listen to Ariana or the original. Let's go whatever your whatever your connection is. All right, let's go the original. Ariana can wait. Yeah. This is Wendy Rene. Ah, uh, that's after that song. Laughter. Ariana can wait. All right, minus 10 points. So what is this? But shout out to Riza for picking great samples. Oh yeah. What song is this sampled on on Wu-Tang? Uh, Tears. I feel like Rizza doesn't ever I mean maybe he's he's mentioned as one of the great producers, but he doesn't get enough credit for his sample choices yeah. like uh Q tip, you know, or Dilla. He, I don't think he gets mentioned as often. And I feel like it fits in with the album to it in a weird way. It because like the album has skits and stuff and then this is totally. kind of like a sad song. And it's a, is it the last song? Um, it might be actually. Or second to last. It's third to last. If you count conclusion, yeah. Alright, 
All right, real quickly, you want to listen to uh, Ariana's take? Sure. Why not? Why not? Let's get a little bit in, and then I'll pass it back, and uh, we'll wrap it. I do kind of like the Spice Girls though. Like I kind of um, like Ariana Grande. Like her, yeah, her music. Same. Thank you. Next. I think that's the only reason I want to listen. I think she did a pretty good job with this. You know, it's a pop song. Yeah. About like not faking smiles, like that you're okay. You think you should fake a smile or should you just be honest? People are like, oh my god, how are you? Yeah. I'm sorry, it's time to leave, I gotta leave now. Depends. I have thought about just going full like psychopath, like Larry David esque, just ignoring social cues and just like doing whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. But I just can't do it fully. I can't commit to it. Not yet, at least. Very Lauren Hill. If Ariana Grande was a Spice Girl, which Spice Girl would she be? Definitely posh, I think. <laughs> kind of has elements a lot of a lot of them well judging by my uh, analysis she has the cheekbones of baby spice she's um, kind of like she's kind of like baby spice kind of like uh well because she kind of has the weird like um thing of like well because i've said before that like oh arnia grande is like attractive you know and people are like what are you a pedophile yeah. i'm like she's like 20 something years old it was like, but she looks like a little kid, which I feel like Baby Spice yeah. had the same thing. Like she's like, she's like our age, man. She's like yeah. 26. Yeah. Which I also like about her because I'm sick of these these like pop stars blowing up and being like 20 years old. I it's know like, you haven't even earned your stripes. Well, then I feel like she was around earlier, right? She's been around totally. for a while, she's... but I feel like I didn't really hear about her until recently. And I mean, I heard about. I mean, didn't really listen to her songs and think like, oh, that's actually like not that bad. Yeah, it's like Beyonce bad. too. Like she took a long time to develop into what she is now. Yep. Which is like a terrible artist. No, I'm kidding. I just want the Bay Hive to come at us. I wonder if I want the Bay Hive to email us at connectingtheclassics at gmail dot com. All right, sorry. What? <laughs> All right, I'm passing it. All right. Well, I was going to play two against one, or two becomes yeah. one, Yeah. because I actually like that song, too. Okay, play it. Play it. Nah, I think I want to go to Wannabe. Now let's go two becomes one. Do it. And my connection to it is um, just that Flagpole Sitta was on now that's what i call music with spice girls i was actually on it with say you'll be there so it must have been on that I'll same give, i'll give it to you yeah 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 which you played say you'll be there right yeah 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 so we're crossing streams man sporty spice no that's ginger is it i don't know no 
That's one of them. Sporty. I forgot about sporty. I feel like Ariana Grande has some sporty spice too. <laughs> like posing in athletic wear. See, I feel like they're known for like their pop hits, but this is like the ballad, you know? Classic. Totally. So young Will liked um, Baby Spice. Who does uh, adult Will like? Let me see. Who would I want to become one with? <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm feeling sporty in this video. Nice. Looks like a Gilmore girl. Backflips. <laughs> I like the video though too, as they're just like standing in locations around New York as things are moving yeah. around them in really That's fast classic. motion. Which is a uh, meditation technique I learned. Or if you have yeah. like crazy thoughts, if you just imagine uh, your thoughts, or you imagine you're standing facing traffic, like. Baby yeah. Spice and Ginger are doing in this video right now. And then, like, if you're trying to, like, meditate or just clear your mind, then anytime a thought comes up, just imagine that it's driving in the car and then it just passes by. That's nice. So just think about that next time you're out there, folks. Um, today's episode oh. is brought to you by Headspace. Uh, you know, we make meditation relatable. Um... $19 a month, you know, it's just like Spotify. It's just like uh, YouTube Red, you know? Just, just buy it. Headspace. Meditation so one is th commodifiable. One other thing I forgot to mention earlier was that when the guy was, like, forming Spice Girls, he had this whole, like, MO about he wanted them to be not too good looking or intimidating because he wanted the fans to still buy their music and be, like, make feel relatable yeah i feel like they're definitely re really relatable uh, which i thought was interesting spice world great movie what do you think of this track it's all right i think this was uh too slow for me yeah but i like that you dig it it's the only way to be. It kind of reminds me a bit of that PM Dom Don track. Yeah, a little bit. We're weaving webs over here. All right, pass it back. That like down tempo. That was the word I was looking for. Down that tempo. like electronic yeah. genre called down tempo. Yeah, chill, not chill hop. What was the other word for it in the '90s? There was a word for it early 2000s. I think you're uh, thinking trip, of trip hop, hop but yeah. trip hop, trip hop is a little different. But yeah, more or less same world. Yeah. It's not the boom, um, boom, all right. boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Like all right. Yeah, exactly. You use sort of a hip hop beat, but it ends up being like chilled out music. All right. So we won't do tears. We already heard the sample twice. So I'll go with my all time favorite from 36 Chambers, Protect Your Neck. All right. Nice. I think some of the best verses. I feel like you got to do it. Apparently. Got to do it. When I was reading about this album, apparently this was like the obvious lead single and stuff, but it was like already done. And then the rest of the album just formed around it. Oh, interesting. That makes sense. Also, I found this version which doesn't have the like bleeps over um, ODB's verse, which I was excited about. Nice. Yo, what's up, man? Cool it, man. Chilling, chilling. Yo, you know I had to call. You know why, right? Why? Because, yo, I never ever called and asked you to play something, right? Yeah. You know what I want to hear, right? What you want to hear? I want to hear that Wu Tang. Wu Tang again? Ah, uh, yeah, again and again. Wu Tang clan coming at you. Watch your step, kid. 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 I smoke all the like. 
like smoking Joe Frazier, the hell raiser, raising hell with the flavor, terrorize the jam like troops in Pakistan, swinging through your town like your neighborhood spy. Shout out to, so with me. shout out to the listeners on In The Points feed from Pakistan. I'm kicking the Lone Ranger, <laughs> cold wet, danger, deep in the dark with the art, to rip the charts apart, the vandal, too hot to handle your battle, you're saying goodbye like Devin Campbell, rock neck, inspect the decks on the set, the rebel, I make more noise than heavy metal, the way I make the crowd go wild, sit back, relax, won't smile, Ray got it going on pal, call me the rap assassinator, rhymes rugged and built like Schwarzenegger, and I'ma get mad deep like a... Th- rhymes rugged and built like Schwarzenegger, and yeah. yeah. bring it back. So this is what I mean by like I feel like RZA knew that this was the money like formula and that he didn't have to do this on every song that he could just like have a couple hits and then finish the album. Yeah, you're right. And just like people rapping. But this isn't like a like conventional he, hit either, you know? He like embraced the idea of like non-perfectionism. Yeah, I guess. Production over perfectionism. Well, it's like the gritty style, you know? Yeah. To the one six ooh, I mean oh yo check out the phone like the Hudson or PCP when I'm dusting niggas off because I'm hot like sauce the smoke from the lyrical butt make me uh, oh what grab my nut get screwed ah here comes my sound let's down to be a baby why you to my crew with the uh, apparently yeah 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 come on baby or one of the things I remember from the RZA book is that he when he became Bobby Digital later on yeah he like bought a bulletproof escalade and bought a police scanner and thought he and would smoke pcp oh, and he thought he was like a uh, superhero and he would just drive around la like trying to follow crimes with like the plan he was going to bust them up but really he was just like sitting paranoid in his car that's hilarious that's kind of sad but hilarious yeah Again, can't recommend Rizzo's books enough. Great stories. And like they totally still had like the old school style, you know? Yeah, but it was like coming into the 90s, you know? Yeah, switching to the golden era. Rizza also too, not a bad rapper. Not bad at all. Also, I feel like this song, because it does the thing at the end with the talking about what people do to you. Here comes Genius. Jizza. Best show I ever saw was Kendrick Lamar opening for Freddie Gibbs, opening for Jizza. Wu Tang? Oh, wow. Opening for Jizza at the Echo Plex. That's awesome. Liquid Swords. All right, that was oh. episode 29. It's closing time. <laughs> yeah. Should we put on closing time? Nah. All right. Uh, thanks for listening. Email us. And let us know what you think. 90s up. If you got some theme closing ideas, time. come our way. Open yeah. all, all right. Goodbye. Closing time Turn all of the lights on Over every boy and every girl Closing
closing time One last call for alcohol So finish your whiskey or beer Closing time You don't have to go home But you can't stay here I know who I want to take me home Some other beginnings end.